Yes, file item 73 is SB 81. Secretary will read. Senate Bill 81 by the Committee on Budget and Fiscal Review and act to education finance and making an appropriation therefore to take effect immediately, bill related to the budget. Senate. Thank you, Madam President. Colleagues, I don't think there's anyone among us who has not heard from our school districts in the past few weeks regarding school transportation programs and the funding concerns as a result of the trigger cut of $248 million back in December. So what this bill does for this current year and this current year only is restores that $248 million and instead implements a $248 million reduction to school revenue limit apportionments. So the bill is completely revenue neutral. It attempts to keep the savings for purposes of the balanced budget in a more equitable way and does so by allocating this $248 million trigger cut on an equal per pupil basis. It comes to about $42 per pupil distributed equally throughout the state. I'd ask for your aye vote. Members, debate or discussion? Senator Anderson. I, I, raise, I uh, rise in support of this. I would only ask that as, we're, as the governor's looking at cuts and, and our body is proposing cuts, that we think in terms of all the different school districts and how much they receive from the state. You've got some districts like the LA Unified who are, are receiving over $14,000 per student while other districts, uh, poorer districts, are receiving uh, slightly over $8,000. It would be better if we could do it as a percent of their uh, ADA money uh, so that it would be even more equitable, but this is certainly a great step in the right direction, and I urge an I vote. Thank you. Further debate, members? Any further debate? Seeing none, uh, Senator Leno, you may close. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, thank you, Senator Anderson, for your comments. And yes, again, just to reiterate, this is only for the current year. So as we enter into the budget year conversations, that's exactly what we will be addressing. And very specifically, this is to concur in assembly amendments. Members of the Secretary, the Secretary will call the roll. Alquist, aye. Anderson? Aye, Berryhill. Blakesley? No. no. Calderon? Aye, Canella? Aye, Corbett? Aye, Correa? No. De Leon? Aye, Desaigne? Aye, Dutton? No. Emerson? Evans? Aye, Fuller? Aye, Gaines? Aye, Hancock? Aye, Harmon? Hernandez? Aye, Huff? Kehoe? I, Lamalfa, I, Leno, I, Ted Lou, Carol Lou, Lowenthal, I, Negretta McLeod, I, Padilla, I, Pavley, Price, I, Rubio, I, Runner, Semidian, I, Steinberg, I, Strickland, No, Vargas, I, Walters, Wolk, I, Wright, I, Wyland, no, ye, ye, I. Call the absent members. Berryhill, no. Emerson, Harmon, no. Huff, Ted Lou, Carol Lou, Pavley, Runner, Walters. Walters, no. All righty, ayes 26, noes 8. Uh, the bill is concurred. Assembly amendments are concurred in, and we will move on to file item 74. The so secretary will read. Senate Bill 95 by the Committee on Budget and Fiscal Review and acting to state cash resources and making an appropriation, therefore, to take effect immediately, bill related to the budget. Senator Leno. Thank you, Madam President. Colleagues, this is SB 95. It is a cash management trailer bill. As we were reminded by the controller this week, as is common in the ebb and flow of our revenue streams during the fiscal year to alleviate some cash pressure in the months of March and April as the revenue begins to come in, this will authorize general fund 
cash borrowing, different from budget borrowing, from seven additional special funds, of course, to be paid back with interest. You may remember when the treasurer went to the bond market to sell some revenue anticipation notes back in November. He borrowed only five, he sold only $5.7 billion worth, whereas traditionally since 2006 it had been closer to about $10 billion worth. If he had done the $10 billion, we wouldn't be here discussing this today. He did so to save about $50 million in debt service. We'll be spending less of taxpayers' money on interest payments by managing our cash situation in this way. And keep in mind, rather than paying Wall Street interest, we'll be paying our own special funds interest so that we can further the purpose of those special funds. Again, I would ask your vote to concur in assembly amendments. Members, debate or discussion? Senator Emerson. Thank you, Madam President and members. Um, as I stated in Budget Committee, I, I rise in opposition to this measure. The, the controller has told us that uh, we're $2.6 billion higher in our spending than we uh, should have been under our recently uh, enacted majority vote budget. And the front page of the SAC B just today has an article saying that spending on state employee salaries has increased by a half a billion dollars this year alone. The governor has repeatedly called upon the legislature to take action on his spending cuts, but the majority has refused to do that at this point. They have told him no. The governor has asked us to uh, enact some real uh, pension reforms uh, in the conference committee. Uh, that is quickly becoming a, a joke, and uh, nobody believes this legislature will enact uh, responsible pension reforms. I ask for a no vote. Further discussion, members? Senator Huff. Thank you, Madam President. I rise in opposition to this, not on the merit, because I, you know, there's different reasons you can argue uh, why this isn't a good bill, as Senator Emerson recently did, but uh, I rise on the grounds that this is perverting the process of Prop 25. And in Prop 25, it allowed for majority vote for the budget. This is not a budget implementation bill. We already did that. So to get around the legal obstacles, this has an appropriation of $1,000 in it. It absolutely has nothing related to the policy bill we're doing. And so um, I think that's a disturbing trend that we see using Prop 25 to get around a two-thirds vote. There may very well be easily two-thirds support of this, but we won't know because we're going down this path of just we can do this, we believe we can do this, we haven't been challenged on this, therefore we will do this. And that's the wrong reasoning. I urge a no vote. Senator Anderson. I uh, also rise in opposition to this. I, I have a slightly different take. You know, this is a, a Band-Aid on a much bigger problem. You know, we saw earlier this year that the uh, governor has proposed $6 billion of additional spending, 7% more than what we spent last year in the budget. Uh, we are now going to pay Rob from Peter to pay Paul with additional borrowing. It absolutely makes no sense to me that we can, in, in a budget proposed by the governor, spend more money than what we had last year when we know that we have a cash crisis and we have a revenue problem. So um, uh, to me, this just kicks the can further down the road, and for that reason, I will not be supporting it. Thank you. And Senator Gaines. Yes, I also rise in opposition. Um, this is in clear violation of Prop 22, and I don't know how you could um, proceed forward against the will of the people on this, and I think it would just lead to uh, litigation on this issue. So I don't think, uh, I, I know the controller's trying to work hard in controlling our cash flow and try to do it at least, at, uh, least expense. I understand that. But uh, when you're violating Prop 22, I don't think that's a path we ought to be going down. So I urge a no vote. Thank you. Senator Hancock. I rise in favor of this bill. I would urge people not to use Prop 25 as a reason not to vote for what I believe we all agree is very good practical public policy at this time. I, I would point out that one of the reasons a Prop 25 uh, was proposed and was approved by the voters was because of the repeated 
policy concessions unrelated to the budget that um, were extracted because of two-thirds vote requirements. So uh, I, I think that we need to be careful as we move forward, but in this case, this is a practical, good policy solution to a budget dilemma. It will be good for the people of California, and I would urge an I vote. Anything further, members? Any further discussion or debate? Seeing none, Senator Leno, you may close. Thank you, Madam President. Just to remind everybody, this is sound fiscal policy, which is why it has the support of the controller as well as the administration. The difference, of course, again, between cash flow borrowing and budget borrowing, that budget borrowing involves funds used across fiscal years. This is money that will be paid back with interest, benefiting taxpayers as opposed to borrow, borrowing from the outside. Again, asking for your concurrence in assembly amendments. Discussion has closed and the secretary will call the roll. Alquist, aye. Anderson, no. Berryhill, no. Blakesley, no. Calderon, aye. Canella, no. Corbett, aye. Correa, aye. De Leon, aye. Desaunier, aye. Dutton, no. Emerson, no. Evans, aye. Fuller, no. Gaines, no. Hancock, aye. Harmon, no. Hernandez, I Huff, Kehoe, aye. I Lamalfa, no. Leno, I Ted Lou, I Carol Lou, Lowenthal, I Negretta McLeod, I Padilla, I Pavley, I Price, I Rubio, I Runner, Semidian, I Steinberg, I Strickland, no Vargas. I, Walters, no, Wolk, I, Wright, I, Wyland, no, Ye, Ye, I. Call the absent members. Huff, no, Carol Lou, Runner. Ayes 24, noes 14, assembly amendments are concurred in. We'll move to file item 75. Senator Leno, uh, the secretary will read and then uh, you may open. Senate Bill 98 by the Committee on Budget and Fiscal Review, an act linked to healing arts and making an appropriation, therefore, to take effect immediately. Bill related to the budget. Colleagues, SB 98 is a budget trailer bill that is necessary for the Board of Registered Nurses to regulate the practice of registered nurses in California. You may remember that Senator Price had a bill last year, which is SB 538 which extended the sunset on the board. Uh, there were some parts of that bill with which the governor disagreed, which is why he vetoed the bill. The veto concerns expressed in his veto message have been addressed in this bill, so there is no longer any conflict. And with this, we'll restore the Board of Registered Nursing and establishes a new sunset date of January 1st, 2016. It also reestablishes the terms of office for the nine members of the Board of Registered Nursing and then also appropriates to the Board of Registered Nursing unencumbered funds that were appropriated to the board in the 2011 Budget Act. I would ask for your concurrence on assembly amendments. Debate or discussion, members? Is there any debate? Seeing none. Um, uh, Senator Leno, anything to close? Ask for your aye vote. The secretary will call the roll. Alquist. Aye. Anderson. Aye. Berryhill. No. Blakesley. No. Calderon. Canella. Corbett. Aye. Correa. Aye. De Leon. Aye. Desaunye. Aye. Dutton. Emerson. Evans. Aye. Fuller. Gaines, no. Hancock, I. Harmon, Hernandez, I. Huff, Kehoe, I. I. Lamalfa, Leno, I. Ted Lou, I. Carol Lou, Lowenthal, I. Negretta McLeod, I. Padilla, I. Pavley, I. Price, I. Rubio, I. Runner, Semidian, I Steinberg, I Strickland, Vargas, I Walters, no Wolk, I Wright, I Wyland, I Ye, Ye I. Call the absent members. Calderon, I Canella, 
Dutton, Emerson, I, Fuller, Harmon, I, Huff, Lamalfa, Carol Lou, Runner, Strickland. Ayes 28, noes 4. The assembly amendments are concurred in. Members, uh, we are going to uh, consideration of the daily file. Senator DeLeon, you are prepared to take up file item 67? Secretary will read. Senate Joint Resolution 10 by Senator DeLeon relative to firearms trafficking. Senator DeLeon. Thank you, uh, Madam President, as well as colleagues. SRJ 10, Senate Joint Resolution number 10 urges the President and the Congress to pursue a comprehensive approach to address the illegal trafficking of U.S. military assault-powered weapons uh, and ammunition to Mexico and other Central American nations such as El Salvador, Guatemala, and Honduras. Although California is not one of the top uh, so-called source states of illegal high-part assault military weapons that are being trafficked uh, due to our very strict and very progressive gun control laws in the state, our freeways and highways are being used to smuggle high-part assault weapons and ammunition into Mexico, whether it's the 80 coming in from Reno, going down south, using the 5 corridor going south, or the 10 west to the 15 south, or the 15 south as well as the 5 south. Thousands of families on both sides of the border have lost loved ones due to gun violence. And I have heard from many constituents about family members that have been terrorized by heavily armed drug cartels. Uh, last October, the uh, Select Committee on Immigration and the Economy ha heard extensive testimony on this subject. The consensus among state and local law enforcement officials in California, the Department of Justice, as well as the California Highway Patrol, the Sheriff of Los Angeles County, as well as the Sheriff of San Diego County, who were present in their testimony, which was very powerful, as well as the Chief of Police Liaison from Tijuana, Baja California, uh, stated that in addition to the need for more resources, which is quite obvious, uh, to shore up operations and collaboration on the border, on the front lines, stronger federal laws need to be part of the solution. This is uh, because the rise in trafficking that's being facilitated by a very weak patchwork of law control laws in other border states across the country, uh, chiefly Arizona, New Mexico, Texas, as well as Nevada. So SRJ10 simply calls for a comprehensive approach that includes similar laws that we have here in the state of California. I believe that California should advocate for all these reforms at the federal level. Colleagues, I respectfully ask for an I vote. Is there debate or discussion, members? Senator Anderson. This bill may be hard to track because it's coming at us fast and furious. What everybody was concerned about with fast and furious, the sting, is now coming to fruition today. We're now proposing bills based on the federal government giving guns to Mexico. This is nonsense. What we really need to be doing is calling on Congress to launch a deeper and further investigation into Eric Holder in what he did and what he knew and when he knew it. This is no solution, what this is, is adding bills to what looks to be, at, at, at first blush, a government cover-up. I urge a no vote. Anything further, members? Senator LaMalfa. Thank you, Madam President. Um, if, it, if it wasn't fast and furious, it'd almost be funny, but it's not. Senator LaMalfa, I think there's some interference on your microphone. You, uh, Senator Harmon's microphone, or Senator, what about Senator Canella? Senator, you, would you please use Senator Canelo's microphone? We're, we're hearing a hiss up here. Okay. Se S Senator LaMalfa, Senator, would you, would you please use Senator Canelo's microphone? Hey, we're still getting a hiss? All right. Uh, there you go. Senator Walters' microphone. Senator Walters, thank you for coming to the rescue. <laughs> Senator LaMalfa, thank God you have a woman to help you. Go ahead. <laughs> I'm glad I got my red dress. So, 
usually the hissy to save for outside the committee room, but uh, um, that said, um, 2,000 guns have been uh, lost track of by our federal government going across to the Mexican border under the Fast and Furious. One border control officer was found murdered at the hands of one of those Fast and Furious weapons. So to have this kind of measure coming out of here in light of who's in charge at the federal government and giving them more responsibility on this really is a slap in the face to all lawful gun owners, to the Border Patrol agents, and to any freedom-loving American. This is the wrong measure and certainly the wrong people to be in charge of such a, such a policy. So I, I have to ask for your no vote on this. Thank you, Senator LaMoffa, and thank you for your patience with the microphone. Senator Gaines. Yes, I rise in opposition. I'm concerned, again, on the limitation of gun rights in the state of California, our Second Amendment rights. Um, we're experiencing an increase in crime throughout the state of California. We've had 60 break-ins in the city of Rockland over the course of the last two months. Uh, we've had break-ins in Granite Bay. We've had break-ins up in Redding where a 66-year-old woman had a guy breaking into her house, told him to exit the house. He would not exit and shot him dead. And he had been arrested the day before at the county jail. When we take a look at what's happening with realignment, we've got real issues at hand in terms of increasing crime rate. Right now we're talking about a resolution that I think ultimately is going to limit your gun rights there in the state of California. So I urge a no vote. Members, any further discussion? Any further discussion? Uh, seeing none, S S Senator uh, De Leon, you may close. Thank you, Madam President. Um, let me make a, a few clarifications and a quick statement so I can close. Uh, one, with regards to Senate Joint Resolution, it's unfortunate the uptick of, of crime that's currently taking place uh, somewhat up north from here in Granite Bay and, and elsewhere in Rockland. Um, this has, is not germane specifically to anything in, in the state of California. Uh, with regards to high-power military assault weapons, we have that ban that already currently exists. What this does is it sends a symbolic message to the White House, to the Vice President, as well as to the leaders of both house, houses of the Congress uh, with regards to the illegal high-power assault weapons uh, trafficking that's currently taking place uh, from the United States uh, into Mexico. Uh, it's a double-edged sword given the fact that the vast majority of the consumers of illicit drugs uh, are in the United States and that that is the fuel that feeds the violence currently taking place uh, in the in Mexico as well as other Central American nations, Honduras, El Salvador, uh, as well as uh, uh, Guatemala. Uh, specifically with regards to Fast and Furious, um, I, I, I do believe I think uh, the senator from San Diego County made reference that there is a hearing as we speak right now by Congressman uh, Darrell Issa on the House with regards to an investigation of the Fast and Furious program. Uh, I'm not here to defend or criticize uh, the ATF, uh, but to put that in context, uh, what's in question right now with regards to Fast and Furious is roughly about 1,000 high-powered assault weapons uh, that were utilized uh, and were not traced into Mexico. To put that in context, what we're talking about is we're talking about an average of 80,000 80, high part assault weapons that are trafficking, being trafficked into Mexico and they're tracing them back into the United States. The number of high part assault weapons in the Fast and Furious program, when you do the calculation, I'm glad that the Senator brought it up, is 1.67%. 1.67%. So I don't want to use Fast and Furious to sort of be utilized as a, as a smoke screen to sort of deviate from the larger problem that currently exists or to sort of obfuscate the larger problem at hand. This has nothing to do with the Second Amendment of the Constitution of the United States. This has to deal with working in a co uh, collaborative and cooperative uh, manner with Mexico as well as other nations so we can stem the illegal flow of these high part assault weapons into the Republic of Mexico. So with regards to Fast and Furious, again, I don't want to use that to sort of obfuscate and use that as a smoke screen because this has nothing to do with Fast and Furious. Finally, I would say just, uh, Madam President, as well as colleagues, to just uh, close this. As uh, John Lindsay Poland said of the Friendship, uh, the Fellowship of uh, Reconciliation, uh, there's quite plenty of blame to go around for the tragedy of the 
deaths of more than 50,000 uh, Mexicans, mostly killed by U.S. purchased weapons since 2006. You can blame the trigger men who respond badly to poverty. You can blame drug traffickers who are running their organizations. You can blame the drug users whose money fund the guns. You can blame the drug prohibition because there's simply no peacefully way to sort of redress the disagreements in an illegal industry. You can blame the bankers who have processed billions of dollars with regards to the drug trade. You can blame the broken judicial system that does currently exist in Mexico. You can blame corrupt, corrupt police that are on the take. You can, in fact, blame the gun smugglers. Or, in fact, you can blame the women who work midnight shifts working in the maquiladoras who have to take the bus late home at night. You can blame immigrants who cross the border who are trying to unite their families and be together with their children. And you can blame the activists who are standing up to, to try to take over the brutal takeovers of their communities. And you can blame the cops who don't bow down to organized crimes or blame the teenagers. The teenagers at a party where gunmen raided and began shooting and killing everybody that were present at that party. And this way we can blame anyone and everyone but not take responsibility ourselves as policymakers regardless of our political party. That's why I want to move forward SJR 10. I think it's a very respectful, comprehensive manner, being respectful to the Second Amendment of the Constitution, just dealing with the illegal trafficking of high part assault military weapons that are going south uh, into Mexico. Uh, with that, Madam President, as well as colleagues, I respectfully ask for an I vote. Thank you, Senator De Leon. And the discussion is closed. The Secretary will call the roll. Alquist? I Anderson, Barry Hill, and Anderson no, Barry Hill no, Blakesley, no, Calderon, I Canella, no, Corbett, I Correa, no, De Leon, I Desaunier, I Dutton, Emerson, no, Evans, I Fuller, no, Gaines, no, Hancock, I Harmon, no. Hernandez, aye. Huff, no. Kehoe, aye. aye. Lamalfa, no. Leno, aye. Ted Lou, aye. Carol Lou, Lowenthal, aye. Negrete McLeod, aye. Padilla, aye. Pavley, aye. Price, aye. Rubio, Runner, Semidian, aye. Steinberg, aye. Strickland, no Vargas, I Walters, no Wolk, I Wright, Wyland, no Ye, Ye I, Dutton no. Call the absent members. Carol Lou, Rubio, Runner, Wright. Eyes 21, nose 15. The uh, resolution is passed. Members, uh, we're going to move on to the special consent calendar. We're at the special consent calendar, members. The secretary will read. Senate Concurrent Resolution 60 by Senator Desaunier relative to California Teen Safe Driving Week. There's no objection to the consent calendar. The secretary will call the roll. Alquist. Anderson. Aye. Berryhill. I Blakesley, I Calderon, I Canella, I Corbett, I Correa, I De Leon, Desaunier, I Dutton, I Emerson, I Evans, I Fuller, I Gaines, I Hancock, I Harmon, I Hernandez, I Huff, Kehoe, I, I Lamalfa, I Leno. I Ted Lou, I Carol Lou, Lowenthal, I Negrete McLeod, I Padilla, I Pavley, I Price, I Rubio, I Runner, Semidian, I Steinberg, I Strickland, I Vargas, I Walters, I Wolk, I Wright, I Wyland, I Yi. Ye I. Alquist I. Call the absent members. De Leon. I. Huff. Carol Lou. Runner. Eyes 37, nose is zero. Uh, the uh, consent calendars. What's that? Okay. 
Uh, we are going to return to motions and resolutions now, members. Senator Price, you have an adjourned in memory. Yes, ma'am. Uh, Madam President. <clears throat> uh, Madam President, members, I rise today to adjourn in memory of television pioneer Don Cornelius. Many of you remember him as the host of the popular television show Soul Train. Before BET, before MTV, and before HB1, there was Soul Train, a Saturday morning favorite. Soul Train first appeared on American Airways in 1971 and ran continuously for 50, uh, 35 years. Senator McLeod's, I think, doing her own Thank tribute. Uh, a record that will not be surpassed until 2016 when the Entertainment Tonight show completes its 35th season. As the host of Soul Train, Don Cornelius brought rhythm and blues music to the forefront, showcasing the Jacksons, Earth, Wind & Fire, Stevie Wonder, Elton John, and others. And at the end of every show, he encouraged us all to have peace, love, and soul. And so please join me in remembering Don Cornelius. Senator Price, thank you for uh, adjourning in memory of Don Cornelius. We, we appreciate uh, his con contributions to American culture and music and um, delighted uh, to see Senator Gloria Negretti McLeod join in the tribute. Uh, members, uh, we'll go to Senator Calderon. Is, and for what purpose, Senator Calderon? Uh, adjourn in memory. Uh, please go right ahead. Thank you, uh, Madam President, members. It's, it's with the deep sorrow uh, today that I adjourn in memory of Josephine A. Uh, de Aguero, who passed away on Monday, January 9th, 2012, at the age of 98. Her services were held at the uh, Del Angel Mortuary in Montebello, and she was buried at uh, Rose Hills Memorial Park. Uh, Ms. Uh, de Aguero, um, the mother of a very dear friend of mine, uh, Walt Diaguero, uh, and he's a very dear friend of the family, uh, and his mother was a very uh, much an inspiration to him and to my brothers uh, as we uh, uh, went through our journey through education and where we are today. Uh, she was born uh, in uh, Adeline, Aragon. Uh, she was born Josephine Adeline Aragon on July 3rd, 1913, in Colorado. Uh, when she was five years old, following her mother's death, she was sent to and educated at the Catholic uh, Girls Boarding School in Denver. And upon graduation, she attended nursing school for a short time and practiced as a nurse intern. In the mid-1930s, she then moved to California where she met her husband, Jerry. Together, they started a family. They raised their children, Margaret, Philip, and Walter. And throughout her time, on earth, she was dedicated to lifelong learning and was inspirational in her two sons' formal education. And with her encouragement and help, uh, her two sons finished college, went on to successful professional careers in business and academia. Josephine was brave, courageous, and throughout her life uh, as well as in death. And she endured her mother's death at a very young age, carried on with little emotional support during her school years and moved ahead in spite of the economic upheaval, upheaval of the 1930s. The events of her life provided strength and resolve to overcome diversity, adversity, and misfortune. And she installed, instilled this determination in her children. She is survived by her two sons, five grandchildren, and seven great grandchildren. She'll be very much missed as uh, so we endured her in her memory today. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Calderon, and we offer our condolences to uh, your family and hers. And uh, does the desk have the name? All right. Thank you. We have the name. Uh, I think, uh, Senator Leno, you have an adjourned in memory also, and then we'll go to Senator Evans for an announcement, unless there's another adjourned in memory. Senator Leno. Thank you, Madam President. Colleagues, I ask you to join me in adjourning in the memory of Larry Goldberg, who was a constituent of mine, also a very good friend, and a nationally recognized leader in the Jewish community, also a partner in one of the most remarkable bipartisan marriages I've ever known, his wife being a good friend of many in this room named Nancy Goldberg. Uh, Larry, 
was really driven by his lifelong passion of being a committed Zionist and also, as he saw it, the great need for both major parties of this country to address and to court the Jewish vote. He was uh, someone who had served on the national staff of three Republican presidential campaigns and was executive director of the effort to secure voting support from the Jewish community and also served in the Nixon White House as liaison to the Jewish community. Uh, at the same time, he was national co-chair of Republicans for Clinton Gore in 1992 because of his dissatisfaction with the policy toward Israel of President George H.W. Bush and Secretary of State James Baker. But he was also a professor at the University of San Francisco at the Frome Institute as an authority of the political process. He also held national leadership positions with the American Jewish Committee, the American Israel Public Affairs Committee, and also the Anti-Defamation League. The list is very long, but I think he will be remembered mostly for his strength of character and for the quality of his character, also as an adored husband, father, and grandfather, also for his honesty, his trustworthiness, and his concern for others. In short, he was a true mensch. And I know that his wife and family who were by his side at his home in Tiburon when he died at the age of 80 last week uh, would be pleased to know that we are joining her and them in remembering Larry Goldberg as we adjourn today. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Leno. And Senator Pavley on uh, Mr. Goldberg's passing. Senator Pavley. Let me also uh, add my condolences and thank Senator Leno for bringing that up. Senator Simidian and I, um, as well as Senator Liu, who's not here today, had the absolute honor and privilege of going to Israel with the Goldbergs. Um, with the Jewish Federation and their passion and love for Israel was contagious and it was a life-changing trip for, for many of us. The most gracious couple, um, but with Larry, he loved to debate politics and I remember that about him and when he was here last um, summer with Jewish Family Services on one of their lobby days up here, he knew his health was failing him but he still loved that good argument of uh, talking about the issues of the day. And so uh, I also rise in uh, memory of Larry Goldberg, a fine American. Thank you, Senator Pavley. And to both of you, uh, we join you in offering our condolences to the Goldberg family for his service to our state. Uh, yes, Senator Evans for an announcement and then Senator Wright. Thank you, Madam President. I rise to announce that today is Go Red for Women Day at the Capitol. Members and staff are wearing red, or you're wearing these nice little red buttons uh, to support heart disease and stroke awareness for American Heart Month, which occurs in February every year. Because heart disease is a serious health, health condition and the number one killer of women, the Women's Caucus and the American Heart Association today sponsored health screenings, heart disease and stroke education, and CPR training in the Capitol to help everyone know their risk of heart disease and the warning signs of stroke. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Evans. And uh, for more information, uh, folks can contact your office for the various screenings and things like that. So thank you for making that announcement. Senator Wright, for what you know, purpose? Uh, Madam President, members, on a, a much more somber note, I hope, I'd like to remind people that February is Black History Month, and this Monday uh, on this floor, we're going to honor Quincy Jones, the music producer, uh, movie scorer, uh, magazine publisher, uh, rec contour. Um, sad as we mentioned the, the passing of Don Cornelius, uh, they were very good friends. Um, so on an upside, before we recognize him and an adjourn in memory, hopefully we'll have a live Quincy Jones here Monday to celebrate his accomplishments of some 60 years in the music business. Thank you, Senator Wright. We'll look forward to that. Uh, members, any other announcements or adjourned memories? Uh, seeing none, uh, Senator Steinberg, there, the desk is clear. Thank you very much, Madam President. Members, thank you for your uh, budget uh, actions today. 
Session will resume at two o'clock on Monday. Thank you, have a good weekend, everyone. Thank you, Senate will recess until 3.30, at which time a motion to adjourn will be made. <laughs>